Hey guys, you are watching my channel that is the economics at a glance. So guys, we are done with the demand chapter that contains what is demand, types of demand, different elasticity of demand and different effect that is price effect, income effect and substitution effect. And today onwards, we will start a new chapter that is supply. Okay, so let's get started guys. So what do you mean by supply? Let's first start with the definition. Okay, so what does the definition says? Quantity of a product, a producer is willing to and able to sell. Willing to and able to. Just compare with the definition of demand. Able to and willingness to have. That is the effective desire I have told. Same thing here. Willing to and able to sell. Okay, at a particular price. And at a given period of time. That means you are producing something. Okay. So at a particular time. At a given period of time. At a given place. You are willing to sell. And you are able to sell. That is your supply. Suppose I am a rice farmer. Okay. I am producing rice. So at certain period of time. At a given price. I will sell my rice. Okay. So that is the supply of Mine. Okay. Getting the concept? Okay. Next is determinants. What do you mean by determinants? See. Determinants are the factors which affect the supply. Okay. Let's see what factors are actually affecting supply. See. First one is cost. What do you mean by cost? Cost is actually the price of the raw materials which we are using. Let's say I am a rice farmer and my cost will be the cost I will pay for the land I am using. Okay, that is land rent. The cost I will use for having the seed, fertilizer, irrigation. Okay, so what happens when this cost will increase? When the cost will increase, what happens? We have to pay more for the same production. Yes or no? So what happens? Now the profit will decrease. Initially, I am producing 50 quintal rice. And my cost cost of production is let's say 2500 now my cost of production has been increased that means now i have to pay 3000 to produce 50 quintal of rice so what happens the net profit will decrease because price is same yes or no so what happens when cost will increase our supply will decrease why because our profit has decreased Profit will decrease means we will decrease our supply. We will shift to some other crop. Yes or no? In rice, I am not getting profit means simply what I will do? I will shift to any other crop or any other occupation. So what happens? The supply of rice here is decreasing. Getting the point? When cost will increase, our supply will decrease. Similarly, when cost will decrease, our supply will increase. Why? See, instead of 2500, now if it is decreased to 1500, now for the same 50 quintal rice, I have to expect only 1500. That means what happens here? Uh, my net profit will increase now because price is same. My cost of production is less now. I can get more profit, so I will supply more. Okay? Getting the relation, when cost increases, my supply will decrease. When cost decreases, my supply will increase. That means inverse relation. Clear? Okay. Let's remove this. Okay. Next is price of commodity. Same example I will take. Rice farmer. I am a rice farmer. Okay. Suppose I, usually I am selling the rice in 50 rupees per kg. Okay. My, uh, I supply the rice at the rate 50 rupees per kg. But now the market price of the same rice has been increased to 65 rupees per kg. Okay. Initially I used to sell in 50 rupees per kg. Now I could sell in 65 rupees per kg. What happened? I will supply more because this with the same cost of production I can have more amount of profit here. Because per kg I am getting 15 rupees extra here. Okay, so I will increase my supply. Yes or no? So price has a direct relationship with the supply. Direct relationship means when price increases, supply will increase. 
when price decreases our supply will also decrease why because if price has been decreased from 50 to 40 with the same cost we will get less money so we will lessen our supply getting my point so price has a direct relationship with the supply fine okay next is the number of farms number of farms how see suppose uh, in our in a village there are two rice farmers okay generally what do you mean by farms producing unit okay farm means producing unit Producing unit means what see? In a, uh, let's say in a village there are two rice farmers. Okay. So two rice farmers whatever they are producing they are providing to the market. Now what happens? Four farmer extra have started rice farm production. So total what happened? See initially rice farmer are two. Now extra four rice farmers have been added. That means now total rice farm farmer may six. Six farmers are producing rice means they will provide more rice compared to the two farmer. Yes or no? Two farmer will provide how much rice? Let's say 50, 50 bags rice. Okay. Two farmers will provide 50 bags rice each year. Now that number of farmers has been increased to six. So six farmers can provide 150 or 200 bags of rice. When number of farmers increases, number of supply will also increase. Yes or no? Similarly, in every production unit, when the number of farm has increased, supply will also be increased. Fine? So, this is a direct relationship. Direct relationship how? Because number of farm, when it will increase, our supply will increase. When number of farm will decrease, our supply will also decrease. Okay? Next is taxation. See? What do you mean by tax? As everybody all know that whichever income we are getting, certain portion of that income we have to give to government in the form of tax. Okay? We are not getting in detail like what type of tax. So, we have to give certain portion of our income to the government. Okay? So, what happens? Whatever income we are getting, certain portion is given to government. Okay? So, that certain portion is called tax. When tax will increase, what happens? We have to give more money to the government. So, we are not willing to supply that particular commodity. Yes or no? So, supply will decline. Getting my point? Similarly, when tax will decrease, what happens? Supply will increase. Because for the same commodity, if you have to give less amount of tax, it will be beneficial for us. We can get more profit. So, supply we will increase. Clear? Okay. Next is, next is price of related good. Okay. Well, related good we have taken many of the times the most preferable example that is tea and coffee. See what happens. Suppose I am a tea producer, tea farmer. Okay. Now what happens? Price of coffee has been increased. Okay. Price of coffee has been increased means supply of coffee will be increased because here we have seen price is directly proportional to supply. So here price of coffee has been increased means supply of coffee will increase. Supply of coffee will increase means supply of my tea will decline. Okay, getting my point. So, price of related good, when it will increase, it will affect inversely to the supply of the concerned commodity. Okay. So, price of related good has an inverse relationship with the supply. Clear? Price of commodity has a direct relationship with the supply, but price of related good has an inverse relationship with the supply. Okay. Next is, just a minute. Next is technical improvement. See, we all know that day by day technology is improving. If technology will be improved, we, will, we can have more amount of production. Production will increase means supply will increase. That means it has a direct relationship. If technical improvement will be more, we can supply more. Last one is future expectation. See, future expectation is suppose I am a producer. 
I thought that like my producing unit has a demand in near future. So what I will do? I will increase my supply. See how. Now this situation. This is a pandemic situation of COVID-19. All of you know that. So what happens here? Suppose I am a producer of sanitizer. Okay. I am a sanitizer producer. See. So I have forecasted that in near future there will be extreme demand of sanitizer and mask. So what happens? I will increase the supply of my product. Why? Because future expectation is favorable. When the expectation is favorable, our supply will increase. If expectation is not favorable, our supply will decrease. Fine. These are the relationship and the determinants which affect the supply term. Okay? Clear? So now we will move to our definition then. Determinants then. Now we will move to schedule. What is the law of supply? See, according to law of demand, what we have seen? Price is inversely proportional to demand. But in case of law of supply, see, it is exactly opposite. What happens in law of supply? Supply is directly proportional to price. Okay. Always remember demand inversely proportional to price. Supply directly proportional to price. Okay. Law of supply done. So what we will move to the schedule. How it is directly proportional. See now we will give the schedule of supply curve. Okay. Same example we will take now. Suppose the price of a rice farmer, the rice price is 20 rupees per kg. Okay. Let's say it is 20 rupees per kg. When it is 20, we will purchase, let's say, 10 quintal of rice. Not purchase, sorry, we will supply. I am supplying 10 quintal when price is 20. When price has been increased to 30, I will supply 20 quintal. When the price has been increased to 40, I will increase the supply to 30 quintal. And when the price has been increased to 50, I have still increased my supply to 40. Let's just plot these points in graph. We will see how the curve will come. Okay. So 20, 10. Okay. 20 price, sorry it will be, okay, 20 price because uh, let's say price in y axis and quantity in x axis. So 20, 10, okay, then 30, 20, 30, 20, fine, then 40, 30, 40 and 30 here. Yeah. Next is 50, 40, 50, 40, here, yeah. clear? Now I will join these points. Okay, this will be a straight line. Just uh, try to manage this. This will be a straight line. So it is upward sloping or downward sloping? What you are observing here? Upward sloping. So the graph of supply curve is upward sloping. But whereas what happened in case of demand curve? In demand curve it was downward sloping. But in case of supply it will be upward sloping. Okay. This upward sloping shows that there is a direct relationship between price and quantity supplied. Clear? Okay. So this is all about the supply, law of supply, schedule of supply and the determinants of supply. One thing I have to add here. See, if you will show the equation form of demand and supply, what happens in case of demand, you have to write like this. A minus BP. But in case of supply, you have to write A plus BP. Well, A is your constant. A is your constant. B is slope. That thing we will cover later. The important thing to consider here is, in case of demand, it is minus sign. Which shows there is inverse relationship. But in case of supply, it is plus sign. Why? Because it shows that there is a direct relationship between quantity uh, supplied and price. Clear? Yeah.
So this is all about supply. Next lecture I will cover in which condition supply will shift and in which condition supply will change. That means in the extension or contraction in supply. Till then stay with my channel and don't forget to like and subscribe my channel. Thank you.